Gaddafi is gone. And the new government of Libya, the transitional government, announced Sharia law as a law of land. We are having Omar Arjumand. Omar Arjumand is a well-known women's rights activist. Omar Arjumand is the coordinator of international campaign against Sharia law in Canada. Omar Arjumand, thank you and welcome to our program. Thanks for having me. When Mustafa Jalil announced Sharia law on Sunday, October 23rd, as a law of Libya, you responded to his, uh, his Sharia law uh, announcement, and you oppose Sharia law in Libya. What is your base to oppose Sharia law in Libya? You know, the point is they're talking about moderate Sharia law. Sharia law is one Sharia law totally, and it belongs to the 7th century. When we talk about Sharia law, there is no moderate Sharia law. And every human who are against, any, every person who is against the, the, the individual segregation between men and women, anyone who really agrees for equality between men and women, and who defends children's rights, who defends gay and lesbian rights, they have every right to be worried about the Sharia law to become land of a country. They can never forget what happened in Afghanistan. We can never ever forget what happens in Iran. The reality is what's happening in Afghanistan, what is happening right now in Iran, in Syria, and so many other countries under the Sharia law, which is the true face of Sharia law, it has nothing close to be for any human to be treated equally to another human being. The reality is right now Sharia law is mandated and is running in Libya before he, uh, Mr. Mustafa uh, Jalil had announced it. It's already been there and ruling the country. And they are talking about that Libya is a is progressive country. Libya is a modern country. What they are trying to sugarcoat it for us is this the fact that Libya is consists of various tribes. What they're trying to cover and not to let the public know is that for 40 years during Mr. Gaddafi's ruling power, the Libya was the main base to train terrorism, to train under the name of Sharia. They were training terrorism and they were exporting them to different countries where they would blow up themselves in various uh, cities and various countries. This is what we have concern for. Right now, after his death, the soldiers he trained are attacking women and they're gang raping them under the name of these are the property, this is what they consider, these are the property of men, so therefore they have every right to gang rape them. They are kafir, they don't belong to Sharia, so therefore they have to be punished. This is something that we are concerned about and we have every right to stop it. We want NATO to take, the NATO to take out from uh, Libya and let people of Libya to decide. We need the support of, uh, to support Libyan people, but for sure we need to uh, stop sugarcoating Sharia law in, in Libya. But they are claiming that Sharia law in Libya will be different with Sharia law in Iran, will be different with Sharia law in Afghanistan or Saudi Arabia. So what is your response to that? The, the main example they have so far provided us, they stated that it's going to be moderate Sharia law, which I'm totally against it. There is no moderate Sharia law. They all belong to 4th or 7th century, and they all belong to the time that women were considered slaves, and every man could have seven uh, legal wives. And, and right, it starts from Muhammad when he got married to a girl who was six or nine years old. So they all belong to that time and that duration time. What they are not trying to say, even the most progressive one, which they kept announcing Turkey as one of the most progressive Sharia law, the reality is any time five or six progressive activists men and women are gathering together to talk about the social changes, 
there would be a bomb blowing them up and not only they are killed but also they are killing people around them. So that's called Sharia law. Whether, uh, whether we want to or not, this is the cruelty of Sharia law. What we need as a progressive um, people who really fight for equality between men and women, what we want as defender of children's rights and as I said, gay and lesbians' rights, we want total separation of religion from the state. We are uh, demanding the government to really stop sugarcoating Sharia law to become a law of any land, whether it's in Iran or which they have promoted Khomeini and Khamenei in Iran, and that's more than enough. We suffered enough. We all suffocated enough, and that's more than enough what they did in Iran and in Afghanistan and Iraq. We want not to come out of that country. We want the countries, the government, the Western governments, to stop sugarcoating Sharia law and not name it as moderate Sharia law, as there is no moderate Sharia law. And this is what we want. Western governments, including Canadian government, they're opposing Sharia law in Libya. And uh, Canadian government, they said they don't let Libya to go back forward. What is the similarity of your position regarding Sharia law with Western government? Just to mention, exactly the same thing happened in Iran. When the revolution happened, they highlighted Khomeini for Iran. At the beginning, at the first year of revolution, they kept saying that this is moderated Sharia law. But we know what happened. Over 100,000 execution happened. The gang rape happened. Women are forced and hijab was imposed on them. There is no equality, there is no social gathering, there is no any kind of gathering union for any workers or any women's um, associations or anything like that. The same thing would happen in Libya as well. I know they're talking about that they would not um, let the Sharia law to go backward and they're trying to implement the progressive law but my point is, where would they get this law? Would they get it from the universal human rights? Or would they get it from the book of Muhammad and under the name of Sharia law? If it's under the name of Sharia law, there is no verses in Quran, and no verses in any part of Sharia law that talks about equality between men and women. There is no verses in Sharia law that says that gay and lesbians have equal rights as any other people living in that country. So the reality is, I don't know where would they get the idea and how they want to implement Sharia law in, in Libya, but they still have equality between men and women. Uh, as you know, Razaf is gone, and the new government are saying that Sharia law is the law of the land. How do you see the future of women movement in Libya? How do you see the future for the movement there? Well, the future is under our control, under people's control. Um, we are always relying on people. I believe that women's rights are universal. I believe that any kind of attack to women's rights in Libya, in Afghanistan, in Iran, in Canada, it would affect women's rights in, in various other Western countries too. So I would request, along with other progressive women's rights and human rights, to fight it, to support women in Libya, to support young girls in Libya, to support people in general in Libya, and not to allow the law, Sharia law, becomes land, uh, the, the law of the land and make sure that religious states totally separate from the state and Sharia or any other religion stays private matter of individual. Omar Azulan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me.